Alright. Speedrun Dread vs. Death. It's not too hard of a game. Uh, it does take a little bit of setup that you have to be aware of. First of all, this game doesn't really work very well with high frame rates or unstable frame rates. So you're probably going to want to cap your frame rate either with a third party program or with your video drivers or something like that. I'm using DX Story to cap it at 100. You could cap it at like 60 or 100 or 120. Any of them should work. Also, if you use game capture with OBS, you're, well, at least I was getting camera stuttering every time I moved the camera, which is pretty annoying. Uh, capturing it through DX Story fixed that as well. Uh, otherwise, for options, uh, everything, like your controls or just whatever, you use pretty much all of the buttons. So just have them whatever you want. There's nothing in particular that you need. Uh, Auto-aim you probably want on because it makes the game... It makes it way easier to go fast when you're fighting things. Uh, for your... You don't really need any options. I, I think I had... For some reason there was one setting in the video settings that when I had it at max it was causing frame rate issues for some reason, but I don't know what exactly. Alright, so for the main category versus death, or any percent, you're playing a single player game. The game starts with the Halls of Justice, and it's done and easy. Just because it makes it a little bit easier to do some damage boosts and such. So you start the level, and you load, and time starts right when you press the key to continue. Uh, cutscenes are skippable after like about a second or two, and then you actually get in the game. You can just press any button and skip them. Now there's a few tricks that you'll be using for the whole game. The first is you'll be moving with strafe, strafe walking. Uh, this is a little bit faster than just straight forwards movement. It's not quite at a 45 degree angle, it's more straight than sideways, so you just have to get used to the angle. Uh, next, for your weapon, this is the, uh, is it the law, the lawgiver? Lawbringer? Law something? It has a number of fire modes, basically the only useful ones are high X, which is this one, and armor piercing, which is this one. For a lot of it, you're going to be using high X, and that'll kill most targets really quick. Now next, for the game structure, uh, there's a bunch of main objectives, which is this button. These primary objectives have to be completed for the mission to end. So the first one for this is arresting people. There's going to be a few times where you have to either arrest or kill a group of people. And generally there's a minimum of people that you need to arrest for the mission to pass. But you don't actually have to arrest all of them, but they do have to be dealt with. And an easy way of dealing with people is by killing them. Unfortunately you can't just kill all of them. If you look in the bottom right there's the little eagle meter. As you can see when I shoot people, it goes down. And that was actually kind of awkward. because it didn't kill them in one shot. You actually lose bar by hurting them and then also by killing them. So you want to kill those guys in one shot. Now you need to deal with these guys. So resting them is really slow. So what you can do is cancel that animation. If you actually just... Uh, they're gonna finish resting them. What you can do is if you're doing any sort of animation which includes reloading, or punching, or switching weapons. It'll actually skip that animation. So if we kill these first two, these guys will get scared. And I hit the wrong button. You can start reloading, and then just spam me on all these guys. And you should be able to get three or four of them. And you can kill another one. And finish that. So you see now, I only rested seven. But the objective is complete. So, they all have to be dead or arrested before you can move on. 
So next you move on to the right, not to the left. You get another objective to arrest these guys, but you can just ignore it because it's secondary. And you can go down. <clears throat> A lot of the game is just running through the path uh, effectively. Just strafe walking everywhere you can. Uh, here, when you take fall damage, you actually like stop and move slowly for a little bit in addition to taking damage. So what you want to do right here is actually land on the railing so you don't get any fall. Slow down and keep going. You want to not take fall damage ever in the run since it slows you down. So you gotta run through some more. There's more guys that you can arrest but you just ignore because you don't have to do that. And then when you get up to this part, it'll start the next primary objective, which is dealing with these guys. And these are easy, you can just kill them. Here's where auto-aim is really helpful when you're fighting these guys. Because it makes it a lot easier to aim. So you can cancel your reloads with uh, punching, which makes them a lot faster. And also, once these guys uh, give up like this, if you shoot them, you'll lose law meter as well. If you arrest them, they will actually, your law meter will go up. So if you're not paying attention to your law meter there, you can actually. Uh, fail the mission. Next you have to kill vampires. So the easiest thing to do is just memorize where all of them spawn. First two drop down here, you can use high X to kill them. Next, when you get over here, one spawns in front of you, and one spawns behind you. Reload here. Next you have two spawning right here. And now is a good time to switch to armor piercing, because this is very good against these guys. So there's another two that spawn. There should be one around here and one around here. They might be over there or over there. But uh, you switch to uh, armor piercing here because if you accidentally shoot citizens, your law meter will lower and then you can fail. Next there's two around this corner. And then three fall from the sky here. They are really kind to me and just kind of stood there, which is nice. Next you have one fall from the sky here. You have one around this corner. He usually rushes out. Wow, okay, so that's another thing you need to worry about. And then there's two around this corner. And once you kill them, another three will spawn up here. And one will spawn behind you. Wow, uh, you're not dead. And then once you've dealt with all of them, the mission will end. And now you just need to wait for the ending. So you just basically need to effectively go to their spawns and kill them without shooting any of the uh, citizens. Time taken 420. That's pretty hype. So here you get some stats and stuff. You can just mash your keyboard to get through this really quickly. Uh, this is usually where I split as the mission completes. And you're off to the next one. You just kind of keep mashing to get through this. Now this level we're going to start doing some damage boosts. You're going to go around to this right elevator here. There's another one on the left, but it's slightly less on the way. Now, damage boost, you just want to use high X, look at your feet, jump and shoot really close together. What? Uh, I think I just saved my jump there. It's really bad. So you want to jump over there and hit that button. And then you just want to follow this path. Careful on these stairs, you can actually get stuck right here. So you want to avoid doing that. Run around these guys. button to continue. 
I reload here, switch to AP. You can still use high X, but it's slightly more dangerous. Now you want to trigger this door to open, and then run beside this guy so he stops following you. And then jump over the door and start fighting these guys. Now if you're unlucky, they'll actually run off to fight the judges, which is really bad. And he didn't die. That's unfortunate. When he says vampire scum, then this door will start opening once you've moved close to it. And there's a bunch of another another wave of vampires. You want to kill them. When he, once he says, I'll see you in hell, you can move on. Now next, you need to switch to high X again for a damage boost. This one's a little bit difficult. So it's not necessary. You need to run to the top of this and hit this button. And you can actually jump on the button, remove your shield with a shot, and then jump over with a damage boost. Now next is a really important trick called fall buffering. Whenever you're falling, if you pause the game, it'll actually reset your fall momentum without hurting you. So if you see here, I pause and unpause, and I just kind of like stop falling. So you'll have to do that whenever you're doing a long fall, otherwise you will die. So I forgot to mention that when you have no shields, your damage boost will actually push you further. So that's necessary for some of the damage boosts you'll be doing. So next you just follow this path, you run in here, this button, I need to get on this elevator, hopefully without any of these vampires following you. You can do another damage boost across here, but with the previous one it's a little bit dangerous, so I tend not to do it. What's up Niska? What did Poland do? And you just follow over here. You need to run on this elevator to trigger it, and run over here. Don't run against the wall or you can get stuck. And just do another fall buffer, so you can land before that. Now for here you need to kill all of the vampires except the ones that are on fire. The door won't open until you do that. Once the door- whoop. Where'd he go? What? <laughs> wow, where'd he Okay, and you hear the sound, it means you can open the door. You can just ignore these guys, it doesn't really matter. You need to hit the left button to open up this door. You can get stuck in this door if you run right up to it, but... Go up here. You can actually crouch under those to get slightly faster. Now, usually when you hit this button and keep going, you'll get set on fire like this. If you pause for half a second, then you shouldn't get set on fire. It doesn't do much damage, it just kind of hurts your eyes. It's kind of annoying. And you just go down here, and when you get to the this about this area, you'll finish the mission. So here you can just mash on the keys to go through, skip the cutscenes, whatever. Alright. So at the start of this one, you need to deal with these guys. You need to arrest a minimum of around six or seven, I think. Uh, out of the whole area. So, just use cancelling. You can hit this lever, which will make all of these guys cough. Oh, that's the console. Yeah, I'm using the weapon swap rather than reloading to actually do that. I want to deal with all four guys in here by either shooting or arresting. Now you can shoot this guy, because he's right there. Shoot him. Shoot those barrels, which will explode and release gas to make them cough and give up. Go around here, shoot these two. Gotta arrest that man. You can really easily get stuck on walls, by the way, so you need to avoid that. So now you can go back up here and arrest these two. That one died. 
And then there's just another four down below, and that's it. You've dealt with all of them. Sometimes if you finish that objective right beside the door, the door won't open, and you have to run backwards and run towards it again. So now we can just move on. You can just ignore all these guys. They don't... Wow. You actually pinned me in. It's unusual. You just want to run through this area. They don't really do all that much damage. You just kind of ignore them. Any of the boxes, cardboard boxes in the way, you can just shoot, get past. High X is pretty good. A direct hit usually kills in one hit. So this is a damage, an optional damage boost you can do up here. I'll see if I can get it. So you get rid of your shield, you go up on this one, and then you jump and shoot, and it didn't let me jump, so that's unfortunate. And you only get one shot because you destroy those cardboard boxes when you shoot them. So that just lets you get along this wall, so you can just skip going around this edge, basically. It's a very small skip, so it's not a big deal if you miss it. You can just not go for it. Now you want to jump and shoot shoot that thing, which will open the door. And then more running through. You can ignore these guys, but I like to just shoot these two. Which I missed, but whatever. So make sure you're reloading before you're going down to this tunnel, because this is where the boss is. So you want to throw a grenade to make that boss give up, and you want to kill these guys. just arrest him, which is way faster than killing him, because he takes quite a few shots to kill, as you can see. So as soon as you either kill him or arrest him and deal with the other his bodyguards, you can just wait for the mission to end. I can't jump, why can't I jump? Alright, now you have the mall, and the mall is the worst level. This one, you need to deal with annoying AI. And it's kind of a maze the first time you get through. So as always, you want to switch to high X at the start of the level. And just follow the pattern that I'm going in. You want to go down here. If you crouch here, you actually get over both. If you don't crouch, you only get over one, which is a little bit strange. You don't need to help these guys, you can just ignore them. It's a secondary objective. Um, so this level has... I think... Nine citizens, and you need to rescue three of them, minimum. And just like the gang from before, you need to actually deal with all of them. So you either need to rescue them or kill them. So here you have two. You can shoot one or both of them. Generally, I just let them follow, and you need to get that objective failed. If you run forward and you don't get the objective failed, that means they they didn't die, and they're probably stuck somewhere back there. And uh, the zombies will just ignore them, and you have to go back and kill them. Which is really annoying. So you want to make sure that they die. If they don't die pretty quick, you should probably just kill them yourself. You can just ignore all these guys. You don't care about them. Now you need to jump down there. You can't jump directly on the railing over here, you need to jump on it over here. And then you just run off the side here to fall on this guy's head so you don't take any fall damage. Now you need to deal with these three. And these three are actually the easiest to save, the most consistent. 
So you need to kill these zombies and this one. And then the rest will just stand there dancing so you can throw them. These guys really like to get stuck on stuff. So you need to make sure they don't get they can get stuck right there. They can get stuck on this wall. They can get stuck over on this wall. And they can get stuck on this wall. Once they're past this, then you can just go. Once they get here, they'll be saved and you can just ignore them. But those are by far the most consistent to save, so we save them. Not necessarily the fastest, but you don't want to deal with the next guys, because they're jerks. So here you have four of them. Now ideally, you tell them all to follow, and they'll all just die. You jump down, if you land on that. So this is important. It said objective failed, but that was only to get them to protect them up there. This one is actually they all died. So there's two objective fails. There's one just for protecting them, and then there's one to actually get them out of the way. Also open the door and move back so this guy gets out of the way. So when you run through here, if your objective marker isn't here, that means some of this of the uh, citizens are still alive and you need to deal with them. When it's actually up here, that means they're all taken care of and you're free to leave the level. It's really important that you'll deal with them because backtracking is really slow. Okay, now Icarus Labs is a lot of fun. Um, the pause buffering that we used earlier is actually going to be really useful here because normally you have to run all the way through the lab go down to the thing, you kill Icarus, and you run through and leave. But actually what you can do, if you look over here, you can see like a light down there. And that's actually because the level is down there. Now normally, obviously, if you jump, then you'll just kind of insta-die after a short time. And that's no good. But what we can do instead, and you actually don't have to switch to high X here, if you pause, you'll notice that I'll just stop falling for half a second and then start falling again. It'll actually cancel your fall here every time you do this. So you can just keep doing it. You'll have to get a feel for how long to go. Like if you just, you can do it more than necessary when you're learning, it's fine. And you want to aim first the, uh, to the green, the green one right here. And when you get close, these four lights will appear. You want to aim for the ones that are further away from the wall. And these are skylights that you'll actually, you can fall through and load the level. And now you're right near the end. So you've passed everything leading down into here. And you just go down here and crouch. And you, if you jump while crouching, you move faster. So you just jump through this. And now you just run to the end of the level. So. Ultimately, it's something like 40 seconds to get through here. That was 49, so... That in-game time doesn't count the reset. So that level's really short. This one, however, we just need to run through. This is mostly about optimized movement. You can get around this at that one spot. To over here. You're gonna ignore almost all of the enemies. So, you want to jump on, on this railing, jump over here, hurt yourself, and then damage boost up. Otherwise, you can just walk up the uh, staircase that's right there. It's just slightly slower. And in this room, it's really tight, and these enemies like to get in the way. So, feel free to murder all of them, because they're jerks. Normally, once you kill a couple of them, the rest will just kind of give up, and are and uh, surrender, so you can just kind of ignore them. Now, generally for elevators, they they exit the same side that they uh, you enter on. So for the most part, you can just immediately turn around. Also, I forgot where I was going. So you want another damage boost up here to get through these broken buildings. 
and you just shoot the left barrel of those two to make it explode. And you just want to ignore all the enemies. It's not very dang- well, that was weird. If you are a little bit scared, there's a health pack right here you can pick up. But you should never need it. And you can just ignore these guys. Nice health. This door opens on the on the right, so you want to go around the right way on that area. <laughs> like I said, it's very easy to get stuck on everything. So you need to stay away from as many walls as possible. Now, hospital is another... It's, it's not as annoying. Uh, for this one, there's around... Ten or so citizens, and you need to save four of them. And you don't get a checkpoint until you finish this first area with all the citizens. So, that's the thing to do when you start. Go to the right. Don't. Whoops. Don't equip incendiary because it's completely worthless. I'm gonna open this door. You need to kill this guy. Kill this guy. Now, anything. Any of the dead bodies that are facing downwards are actually uh, zombies. Where is that guy going? That's weird. So you want to make sure they're safe. And you can just murder her because she's really far away. And you rescue these guys by bringing them in here. And again, facing downwards is a bad guy. Murder them. And once these guys stop moving, that means they're in here and they'll stay in here. So you can just close the door on them and they'll be safe. Now you go up here, and there's three in this room that you need to make sure. Generally, they, they don't get stuck, so you don't really have to make sure that they die. You can just kind of let them follow. They shouldn't ever get stuck on anything and fail to follow. It's so again, just running through to the next set. So I still have one following me. You have enough to kill a couple of them. Enough law meter. Okay, I think he's stopped falling. So there's another two in here. He might die. Now, if they're still following you after all this, you can either just shoot them or there's a safety room right here. Since there's multiple ones chasing me, I can just. Uh, I don't actually care if they die or not, so I don't have to close the door. They can just die, whatever. Who cares? Screw them. As soon as they get in there, they'll stop following. Um, what am I stuck on? So she's using incendiary. That's actually really bad, because it's worthless. It's the last two guys here that I just need to bring over right here. One guy facing down. Actually, no, not all of them are. Typically when they're facing down. They'll, uh, they'll be... Yeah, or zombies. So you need to make sure that you close the door here, because if they die, you will fail. <laughs> yes. The hidden, me hidden meeting is that people planking are dead inside. So here you need to murder some vampires. So you can use either high axe or AP, they're both good for these guys. It's a little bit safer with uh, AP. So if she dies, you'll want to pick up her shotgun. Because that'll be useful in the last bit. Wow, you need to die. And you can either run around there or you can actually run up here and uh, get up. You need to jump upwards and then move forwards, otherwise you'll just get stuck on that and not be able to get up. So anyway, you can switch to the shotgun. You just need to deal with Mortis. Now this guy, you're not allowed to kill him, because then he'll become a ghost and get away or something, and it's just... Storyline. So normally what happens is you hit that lever, or the wheel over there, and these things start to burst open and release some toxic nerve gas. So what you can do is actually just shoot them. 
Oh, I got you. I'm actually doing this really badly. Uh, what? So I'm... That was an interesting animation. I'm not at all used to doing this with a shotgun. Uh, straight burn just said it was better, so I thought I'd try it. And I'm not used to... I can actually just snipe this one. Why is it incendiary? What? So if you want, you can actually just hide behind this thing and snipe them. Oh, auto am screwing me over. Anyway, once you burst them all, you need to stand here and wait for him to actually go down, otherwise he can get stuck and not follow. And, uh, yeah, just run down here and spam me on this button. So those little valves can be annoying to shoot. You just gotta get used to hitting them. So now is another level that we're going to skip a lot of. You want to immediately switch to this. You have to get rid of your shield and do a damage boost up. And you want to shoot out that window and go down through this hatch. Now you need to shoot this robot away from the door, otherwise you won't be able to get through. And then you need to hit this button. And now you just need to hit the buttons. There's two on each side, or two on each level. You need to hit the right one twice and then the left one. Now you just need to wait for uh, fire to get up in here so you can hit this button. And then that finishes the level. It's really short. Nice and easy. Now Reese Lake is kind of a complicated and long level that we get to skip probably over a third of. So immediately, there's no cutscene at the start of this one. You just need to move right away. These guys are all zombies. Hit this button and move on. Need to go up and then down. Murder these two guys. Now you can actually do a damage boost up here. Uh, I haven't actually tried it. Oops. So you can do this. And once you've gotten beside this guy, either by running up or by damage boosting, you can immediately run away. You just need to uh, trigger him. And you run back down this way to the elevator. Now these guys are all awake. You can just kind of murder them. Why can't I jump? I can't. That was... What? Why is everything going wrong while I make this tutorial? This is actually getting a little bit frustrating. Spam is on here. Make sure there's no guys. As soon as you get through, hit this button. Jump over and hit this button. This is like the only elevator that exits on the other side. Now you want to go through this door immediately and around these guys. And then you get up into decontamination, where you just slowly go through these, killing vampires one by one. It's kind of boring. This guy. Just the faster you can, the faster you go through the door, the better. You have to kill that guy, get him out of your way. Now here is the elevator. This elevator is on a global timer, and we actually have it. Oh, we missed it. Okay, so we have to quickly kill all these guys before they murder us. As far as I know though, this elevator is on a global timer from when you start the level. So if you do the first part in the same speed, it'll always be the same part. So every time I do this, it's always at the bottom, so I can just quickly jump on it without actually killing any of the guys and keep going with the level. So now we're going to do a skip. To skip a lot of this level. So this is kind of a big area. You can actually just jump on here. Um, jump 
on here. And do a damage boost up without shields. And then go over here, there's more health just in case, and hit this button. So you can actually, like normally you go around there and you go all the way around and you eventually end up here. But you just skip all of that. And here you jump on this little sign before that guy kills you. And you just want to go down here. Just skips going all the way around. It's kind of long. <clears throat> and the rest of the level you just run through. These guys, if you just hold right, you go right past them. Just no trick to it. Trigger this cutscene up here and smash to skip it. I'm coming for you, death. Go to the other staircase, go up to the third floor. You need to fall in this hole, you need to stop over it, otherwise, you'll just run straight over it and keep going. And then trigger the ending. Now, Undercity is mostly just running. Immediately you want to turn around, because they face you the wrong way. You run through this. Hey, loader. Which film are you talking- wow. What? You mean- you mean 2012 film, or the 1995 one? Most of this level is just running. You can pick up this thing, which you can potentially use against the boss, but I don't really like it because if it auto aims, it kind of screws you over. Save the right side, otherwise, you'll get stuck on the rocks that fall down. And just some more running. Yeah, the 2012 one was a pretty good movie. I enjoyed it. I wasn't really expecting much of it, and then it turned out to be pretty okay. So. Yeah. Just more running. This level isn't very exciting until the end. I have my tutorial license right here, sir. This is this, this can't be happening. There's really not much to say here. Sometimes these guys can get in your way, but they usually don't. Just keep going. So up here is the boss. Uh, you can kill him, but it's a little bit slow. And much more fun, you can actually just trick him into killing himself. So he spawns in the middle. You just need to run over here to this edge. And he follows you over. And then you run over to this side. Be careful jumping, because sometimes your jump can get eaten. And he just kind of runs off the edge. And kills himself. And that's it. You can also shoot behind him to try to push him in. But if the auto-aim hits him in the middle, it can actually push him further away from the, uh, the ledge. Now, dead world. This level has the biggest skips. This first area, there's a gate up there that doesn't open until you shoot and kill all these guys and it takes like a minute and it's kind of boring. And so what you can do is actually just run along this edge and just kind of jump. Oh, it, it didn't. It didn't jump. I don't know why it's eating so many of the jump inputs right now. This is a little bit ridiculous. Anyway, you go up here, just go around, and that's it. If you turn too early, you'll actually just get stuck on the side and fling yourself downwards. So that one takes a little bit of practice. And this one is similar. Another gate, you have to kill things. And so what you can do is hurt yourself, and then just jump and boost yourself around. This one takes a little bit of practice, as it's a little bit specific. You. If you do, there's a slope right here, if you can tell, there's a line. Excuse me, I'm trying to explain things. If you do it on the slope, then your jump will probably get eaten and you'll just fall to your death. Oh, also there's a, another skip you can do right here. They got me, dang. I didn't pick up the checkpoint there. 
So this is probably the hardest jump. So you just need to make sure you do it before that line to actually get a jump. And you need to jump slightly before shooting. And that should give you enough boost to get around it. It's just something you need to practice a little bit. Most of the rest of the level is just kind of running. You can kill these guys for fun. Doesn't really matter. And now you need to kill all the humans up here in order to open the gate. That was really good. Did one clip. And now you trigger the final boss. Now this final boss you actually just ignore completely. In order to beat it, you need to save all three of these guys. When you get close to them, a skeleton will spawn. Just make sure they're dead because they can't actually kill these guys. And if any of them die, you have to restart the boss fight. And they do a lot of damage. What am I stuck on? What? Uh, what? What? The fuck did I get stuck on? Apparently everything is going wrong during this tutorial. I promise it's not this hard. So, you just kind of want to make sure there's no skeletons right near that guy. And if you're lucky, he'll actually move the right way and run in the right direction. Occasionally, they don't. So this is kind of RNG for final boss. You can actually reload while opening this. You can't look away from it, but you can kind of aim and shoot a little bit. Get away. Again, high X is not very good near friendlies. You don't have to kill quite as many, you can be a little bit faster running away. Snipe those guys out though. And you basically just need to make sure they'll all make it. So I like to just go over here. Oh, oh okay. Cool. She can actually get stuck on the boss. And I think that's it. Over there. Should be fine. You can actually just hang out in the boss's crotch and he can't get you. You just need to wait for them to all get up there. He seems really mad about it, and whatever. Just wait for it. It's fine. <laughs> yeah, I guess. And then, yeah. You stop time as soon as this mission complete screen shows up. And that's the game. So yeah. You can just ignore everything out, it just kicks you back to the main menu. So just key takeaways is you really need to optimize your movement, make sure you're not getting stuck on anything. Uh, you need to practice the few skips that you have to do to make sure you can get them consistently. I haven't played this game in like two weeks, so that was kind of a problem. But it's fine. It's still even like two weeks out of practice and it was still pretty pretty straightforward. And then, yeah. If you have any questions, just message me or Pen again. He'll help you too. And that's it. Thank you.